Hello everyone, now let us discuss about Good Manufacturing Practices Guide for Active Pharmaceutical Ingredients Part 6. This comes under Q7 Quality Guideline of ICH. And this is a continuation of Part 5. Here we will be first discussing about Materials Management. Coming to General Controls. There should be written procedures describing the receipt, identification, quarantine, storage, handling, sampling, testing and approval or rejection of material. Manufacturers of intermediates and or API should have a system for evaluating the suppliers of critical materials. Materials should be purchased against an agreed specification from a supplier or suppliers approved by the quality unit. If the supplier of a critical material is not the manufacturer of that material, the name and address of that manufacturer should be known by the intermediate and or API manufacturer. Next is changing the source of supply of critical raw materials should be treated according to section 13, which is nothing but change control. The changing the source of supply of critical raw materials should be treated according to the guidelines that are specified in section 13 which, deal, which deals with change control. Coming to receipt and quarantine. Upon receipt and before acceptance, each container or grouping of container of materials should be examined visually for correct labeling including corrections between the name used by the supplier and the in-house name if there are if these are different container damage broken seals evidence of tampering or contamination material should be held under quarantine until they have been sampled examined or tested as appropriate and released for use before incoming materials are mixed with existing stock for example solvents or stock stocks in silos they should be identified as correctly tested if appropriate and released procedures should be available to prevent discharge incoming materials wrongly into the existing stock if bulk deliveries are made in non dedicated tankers there should be assurance of non cross contamination from the tanker Means of providing this assurance could include one or more of the following. Certificate of cleaning, testing for trace impurities, audit of the supplier. Large storage containers and their attendant main folds, fillings and discharge lines should be appropriately identified. Each container or grouping of containers that is batches of materials should be assigned and identified with a distinctive code, batch or receipt number. And this number should be used in recording the disposition of each batch. A system should be in place to identify the status of each batch. <laughs> Coming to sampling and testing of incoming production material. At least one test to verify the identity of each batch of material should be conducted. With the exception of the materials. A supplier's certificate of analysis can be used in the place of performing other tests provided the manufacturer has a system. Supplier approval should include an evaluation that provides adequate evidence, for example, past quality history, that the manufacturer can consistently provide material meeting the specifications. Full analysis should be conducted on at least three batches before reducing in-house testing however as a minimum a full analysis should be performed at appropriate intervals and compared with the certificates of analysis reliability of certificate of analysis should be checked at regular intervals in place to evaluate suppliers processing aids hazardous or highly toxic raw materials other speci special materials or materials transfer to another unit within the company's control do not need to be tested if the manufacturer's certificate of analysis is obtained, showing that these raw materials confirm to 
established specifications. Visual examination of containers, labels and recording of batch numbers should help in establishing the identity of these materials. The lack of on-site testing for these materials should be justified and documented. Now sampling should be conducted at uh, sampling and testing of incoming production materials. Sampling should be conducted at definite locations and by procedures designated to prevent contamination of the material sampled and contamination of other materials. Containers from which samples are withdrawn should be opened carefully and subsequently reclosed. They should be marked to indicate that sample has been tested. Coming to storage, material should be handled and stored in a manner to prevent degradation, contamination and cross-contamination. Materials stored in fiber drums, bags or boxes should be stored off the floor. When appropriate, suitably spaced to permit cleaning and inspection. Material should be stored under conditions and for a stored under conditions and for a period that have no adverse effect on their quality and should normally be controlled so that oldest stock is used first. This is important point. Certain materials in suitable containers can be stored outdoors provided identifying labels remain legible and the containers are appropriately cleaned before opening and use. Rejected materials should be identified and controlled under a quarantine system designed to prevent their unauthorized use in manufacture. And coming to re-evaluation, materials should be re-evaluated as appropriate to determine their suitability for use, that is after prolonged storage or exposure to heat and humidity. For that reason, re-evaluation of materials should be done. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe for further videos on pharmaceutical sciences and other related disciplines.